Welcome, dear learners. Today we are going to discuss about the wildfire disaster management. Before we uh, go for the wildfire disaster management, we have to discuss about what are the wildfires and what are the factors that lead uh, for the development of wildfires. So basically the word fire has been evolved from the Greek word that means pyra, which means growing embers like the flames. And the fire is actually heat and light that results from the three elements. So basically the three elements should combine for creation of the fire. So first one is the fuel. Fuel may be the any kind of wood material leaves, twigs, or any kind of fuel. So another factor that is essential for the fire is oxygen. <clears throat> so keeping in uh, way, when two uh, these components meet, the fire is not created. We need some ignition temperature uh, to create the fire. Like we use lighter for uh, lighting up the gas stove. So it creates spark. So the spark gives the ignition to the fuel in combination with oxygen. So the same <clears throat> principle also applies here, the three elements like fuel, oxygen, and the source of combination or source of uh, heat or ignition should be there so that the fire is created. So the other elements that determine the fire are the kind of weather, presence of fuel, landscape. There are many other factors that are responsible, but those factors are the secondary factors. The primary factors are oxygen, heat, and fuel. These uh, are called the triangle of the fire. So the forest fire is basically defined as an enclosed and freely spreading comb uh, combustion that com consumes the natural fuels. So natural fuels are here, the forests, which are mainly con uh, composed of wood, twigs, underground, uh, organic material like peat, moss, <coughs> or grasses. So when this forest fire happens, it spreads and freely and consumes all the natural fuels. And uh, combustion may be the other word of uh, the fire, but the combustion is a, in controlled manner. It's not the freely like the wildfires. The when fire burns out of out of control, what I was saying earlier, when the combustions happen out of control, that is called the wildfire. <clears throat> so almost everyone basically knows the forest fire looks like what is it composed of basically three elements when the forest fire happens it creates gas flames heat and smoke so the fire gas is uh, created by the combustion of uh, the uh, basically the fuel that is the wood basically these are the, uh, i mean the gas that is created from the combustion of the forest material that is not visible from the naked eye. It, uh, these are many gases depending upon the composition of the wood. Uh, it mainly composed of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide also may be there. And if the, <clears throat> the composition of the wood is uh, something that can also lead for the release of uh, many other toxic gases, so other component is the flame that is basically the light that is uh, that we can see from what naked eye uh, so as long as the four as long as the three uh, elements uh, are present that creates the forest fire these flames can be seen and the heat basically it is uh, one of the important component of the forest fire heat uh, it makes easily the forest fire spread. When a fire happens, it also creates heat. And from that heat, uh, the other portion of the forest fuel is consumed uh, in presence of oxygen. So this part of fire, <clears throat> we can feel the warmth, basically, uh, the infrared uh, component of electromagnetic spectrum. 
So it is around, the temperature could be around 1100 degrees centigrade. So other component that is released from the forest fire is smoke that is quite visible uh, from our eyes. It basically uh, consists of the fine powder, solid particles or some gases or uh, black carbon or uh, the unburned material, particulate matter that creates the smoke. And definitely this smoke creates the breathing problems. Uh, where, uh, wherever the deforestation happens uh, by uh, the burning of the forests, these gases, the smoke travels from one country to another country and definitely it creates the uh, breathing problems, particularly in winters when there is uh, temperature inversion and there is very less dilution of the air and uh, the heavier uh, air parcels get trapped and it can aggravate the health issues if it is combined with the forest fire, which is mostly composed of the smoke. And before going further, we should discuss about what are the various kinds of fuels that can lead to the forest fires. So in forests, there are the fuels are of various types. For example, ground fuels. This uh, involves all combustible, uh, materials below the loose litter of the soil basically the upper portion of the soil that is organic portion the material that is embedded within that uh, portion maybe uh, it may be consisting of the humus at various stages of degradation or decomposition it may uh, be the trees or shrubs or roots underground muck or peat peat is basically at uh, the stage of decomposition Basically, the ground uh, fuel always supports the glowing composition, combustion and not the flame. Uh, it do, basically, it uh, leads to smoldering effect. Basically, the forest fire, one of the forest fire is smoldering. It burns uh, inside. It all, only creates the smoke. It doesn't, uh, uh, it is not visible uh, as you can see the flames are coming out of the uh, fire, uh, burning of the wood. But here in this case, the flames are not visible. The second one is the surface uh, fuels, basically, which consists of the tree leaves, dry tree leaves, basically, fine litter, grasses, weeds, ferns, herbaceous plant that is basically dried bushes, seedlings, saplings of the trees, fine dead wood on the floor, many other things. So this also is an important, this can create the surface uh, forest fires that can spread from one location to other location, but on the surface, not uh, above. Then another one is the aerial fuels. It uh, basically uh, combustible dead or live material located in or under the story means basically uh, it is uh, the upper portion of the surface <clears throat> of the forest is basically consists of dead plants, branch foliage or uh, dead logs, uh, lichens, the mosses that grow on the tree trunks and uh, it basically leads to the crowning fires that spread through the crown uh, of one tree to another tree and that that is very uncontrollable controllable uh, kind of forest fire then we uh, have discussed about the forest fuels now we are going to discuss about the types of the forest fire so based on the material uh, on the forest fuels Forest fires can also be categorized in few of the types, like depending upon the nature, size, spreading speed, and behavior. The forest fires can be categorized like the forest surface fires. These uh, basically burn underground, uh, undergrowth, basically the grasses, uh, dead material on the floor of the forests, loose debris, vegetation. So it spreads like you can see in the pictures, the grasses, these are burning on the uh, forest floor. And second one is the underground fire that I was discussing earlier that the humus at the various stage of the de degradation, that forest fire is underground. 
visually we cannot see this kind of fire but we can see the smoke coming up uh, coming out of the floor of the forests basically is a low intense and consuming organic material beneath the surface litter and it's basically called the smoldering it also leads to the burning of the roots of the trees and uh, it slowly kills all the trees because the smoke that devotes the roots from the oxygen supply then these uh, fires spread very slowly and in most of the cases become very hard to detect and control because we cannot see them visually and we don't know where the fire is going on and we cannot control them and they can go for the months and uh, other terminology for this type of fire is mud fire basically the peat which is burning uh, under the surface of uh, the forest floor another one is the ground fire these fires are the subsurface organic material like dove layers uh, in arctic tundra and tiaga uh, and organic soils and swamps bogs there is no clear distinction between the underground and ground fires but smoldering the underground fire sometimes changes into the ground fires basically we can see some kind of flames coming coming out of the ground or uh, sub surface they are uh, more damaging than the surface uh, fires as they can destroy the vegetation completely and then the crowning is uh, visibly we can see the crowning from the distinct places the basically the unpredictable that burn the tops of the trees that spread very rapidly uh, here the surface uh, fires are not much dangerous as compared to the crown fires in most of the cases these fires are invariably ignited by the surface fires sometimes these surface fires can lead to the crowns but uh, most of the time these uh, surface fires could not lead to the crowns so this uh, is a one of uh, the most spectacular kind of forest fire which usually advances the top uh, to down basically because of certain reason like lightning or uh, rubbing of the trees because of the winds um, the branch rubbing uh, and uh, because of the friction it creates uh, the heat and sparks that lead, can lead to the burning of the top of the trees and this fire can travel downwards and that can lead to the surface fires or ground or uh, underground fires in dense conifer stands with the brisk wind because uh, the because of the winds of the friction which I, which i was telling you earlier the friction of branches or the trunks of the trees that can lead to the crown fires and the firestorm among the forest fire the firestorm spread very rapidly because with the uh, winds this uh, forest fire the crowns can travel from one location to other location very easily and the flames uh, fly out from the base and burning embers spew out of top and can spread to the larger location and the temperature could lead to around uh, 20 uh, around 2000 degree fahrenheit so these are very dangerous to control so there is some kind of vocabulary that we use in the forest fire like a fire is said to be running when it is spreading rapidly so it's called a running fire a fire is smoldering when it burns out a flame or barely spreading when it is uh, the flames are not visible uh, without flames that is called a smoldering a fire is torching when it moves from one crown to another crown in uh, another fire into the crowns basically the top of the trees uh, a burn from another tree because one crown can spread the fire to the another tree crown then uh, a flare up is a sudden acceleration of the forest spread or intensity of the relatively short duration like uh, we use the firecrackers it uh, makes a flare kind of the and it makes uh, spread uh, the high intensity of the forest fire very rapidly then forest fire may be called a creeping when it is spreading slowly with low flames basically the surface 
fire, we can say, by creeping kind of thing. And a fire is said to be spotting when it is producing sparks. When a fire burns, it creates sparks and that sparks travel to another location because of the winds and it creates fire at that place where the sparks uh, basically, I mean, uh, travel. So it creates an, another patch of the forest fire that can uh, be called as spotting. Then it is called crowning when it spreads from tree to tree, usually in the congestion in a very high dense kind of forests. And it's called blow up. On the other hand, a dramatic change in behavior of the whole fire that points rapid transition to a severe fires. When a surface fire or crown fire that can lead to the forest storms that can call the can call uh, that that can be called as blow up. Then we uh, are going to discuss about what are the various causes of the forest fire. So this uh, can be divided into two sections like natural and anthropogen. First, natural causes like lightning, because of the lightning, the, it can create the forest fire basically on the crown of the forests, on the crown of the trees. Second is the friction uh, of the rolling stones, rubbing of the dry, dry bamboo clamps, volcanic corruption, basically because of the wind, the branches of the trees can rub and create a friction and then that friction can lead to the forest fires. So uh, there is uh, the forest fire only happen uh, because uh, the forest fire because of the natural reasons only happen, the percentage is only 5% because of the natural causes. But 95% uh, percent of the forest fires that happen because of the anthropogenic. So the anthropogenic causes can be categorized under the deliberate causes and accidental causes. So first one is deliberate. In deliberate, the most important, and uh, that is called shifting cultivation or geom cultivation, and or it can be called slash and burn, where a patch of land uh, for the agriculture activity is burned and uh, then the agriculture activity is done on that patch of land and uh, for three four years when the fertility of the land is uh, degraded then the patch is abundant and another patch of the forest is burned and uh, same activity so this can lead to the forest fire I mean a patch of land when it is burned for the agriculture activity this is called shifting cultivation and this is a deliberate attempt and then another is flush growth of tindu leaves to flush growth of tindu but basically the uh, various kinds of uh, the herbs that are grown the forest fire forest fires are deliberately done to clear the floor of the forest for growing of such leaves to have good growth of grass and fodder Basically, uh, for the feeding the cattle, we have to grow more grasses and the fodder. So we burn the trees to settle scores with department, uh, forest department, or personal rivalry that can kind of like arson, which uh, deliberately burn the settlements or the forests. Mm, or it can be because of the clearing of the paths by the villagers, basically for transportation to encroach upon the forest land, basically uh, in uh, the community which are living adjacent to the forest area, they can burn the forests for encroaching the land, maybe for the settlements or for the agriculture. Uh, concealing illicit feeling, tribal traditions are there sometimes that can lead to the forest fires and these are the deliberate attempts. Now the accidental uh, attempts are like the collection of non-timber firewood produce. Sometime the forest fire happened accidentally like collection of non-timber forest produce, burning of the farm residues uh, in adjacent to the uh, forest area, if we have the agriculture land, driving away wild animals. That has been an ancient te te technique uh, to protect one uh, by from the wild animals, throwing uh, burning BDs or cigarettes basically when we go for the excursion or outing to the forest sometimes we uh, out of the passion we uh, will light a cigarette or BD and then uh, throw the uh, 
then on the forest floor and that can also lead to the forest fires campfires sometime uh, some sparks from the vehicle exhaust sparks from the transformers if a transformer is adjacent to the forest and uncontrolled pres prescribed burning sometimes we are using uh, we are uh, burning the fuel for creating the charcoal sometimes the that burning gets uncontrolled and that can lead to the forest fires and also resin trapping so these are some <clears throat> causes why forest fires are happening so before discussing the adverse impact the forest survey of india uh, as per the forest survey of the india 50 percent of the forests in india are prone to the forest fires in which occasional fires happen only 43 percent and frequent fires happen 5.16 percent and heavy fires very heavy fires uh, heavy fires are only 0.14% and very heavy fires are around 0.484%. So this is a data from the forest survey uh, of India. So what are the adverse impacts uh, of the forest fires? First, it is the it leads to the loss of available timber resources, basically the timber for the construction purpose, which we get from the forest that is one of the basic uh, ecosystem service of the forests. It gives us uh, the timber from which we can construct our houses, settlements, all that kind of thing. Impact forest fire on the ecosystem, forest fire ecosystem. So the forest ecosystem is very important. It uh, has very important role, for example, for creating the habitats for wild animals. It uh, acts as a hydrological modulator. So if the forest fire happens, so it impacts the ecosystem. It can uh, lead to the degradation of water catchment uh, areas resulting in the loss of water. So we have loss of catchments uh, that are particularly in the forest area where the rainfall or snowfall happens. So forest floor is basically uh, have a lot of vegetation and the, also the tree roots that bind the soil together leads to the infiltration of the water into the groundwater. And also, uh, it can improve the groundwater recharge capacity. So if the forest fire happens, this quality, this uh, service of the forest is degraded. Then uh, what I was earlier saying, the loss of wildlife habitat and depletion of the wildlife, basically it can lead to the loss of biodiversity in the area, floral and as well as faunal biodiversity. Loss of natural vegetation and reduction in forest cover, that is obvious uh, when there is a burning of vegetation like grasses uh, or uh, the ground surface vegetation or the upper surface like the big trees, it can lead. Uh, global warming, because of the forest fire, there is uh, the release of carbon dioxide, which is the primary uh, greenhouse gas that uh, elevates the global warming. And that can increase the concentration of uh, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And also, it uh, reduces the carbon capture uh, capacity of the forests. Uh, then change in the microclimate because if we uh, know that at a particular area where the forest is very dense, the forest has uh, changed the microclimate of area. It makes it cool, very uh, high uh, uh, kind of humidities in the atmosphere because of the forest. It can lead to the soil erosion. Uh, more floods will come because we have no ground cover that can uh bind the soil uh, and it can lead to the soil erosion and also the floods deteriorating of the biological environment because of this uh, the lots of the gases and soups are coming out so it reduces the quality of the environment adverse impacts on the health system socio-economic impacts because various communities that are dependent on the foresters uh, they, get, they derive various benefits like food, fiber, uh, firewood from the forest. So 
their economic status is degraded, carbon sequestration potential is degraded, and overall reducing the tourism value. When the forest is burned, no one going to visit the burned forest is because it is not very uh, like uh, what we see a scenic kind of thing. So what are the managements? How can we manage the forest fires? There are various ways how can we manage the forest fire, like the fire protection plans must be carried out for, for preparedness or response activities. The first is to assess the threat to the human life or property forest is because of the various that can lead to the forest fires. And then the preparedness for the forest suppression must reflect the variable nature of the fire dangers, developing appropriate modern early warning capability of uh, wide line uh, fire danger, initiate prevention activities to reduce the hazards and potential losses. Uh, we must ensure um, a major fire suppression response that reflects the threat. The safety of fire uh, fighting personnel should be also a prime objective uh, after the public safety and environment safety. Must formalize a single management structure for all personnel. Trained, well-equipped, assessed, accredited personnel must be appointed that are uh, used for, uh, employed for the fire fighting system striving for consistent funding that enables fire managers to adequately meet the goals of the guiding principle safety and efficiency so these are all the fire protection plans that can be employed for, for the wildfire management another is fuel management basically the three one of the three components that is the fuel basically the wood litter leaves dried branches moss peat that is basically the fuel so out of uh, these uh, three components fuel is very important then we can uh, if we can manage this fuel we can reduce the vulnerability of the area uh, by various techniques like fuel management program need to be planned to provide protection to the human life property by reducing the potential hazards here we can also employ the GIS GPS system. We, from the satellite data, we can see which portion of the forest is very vulnerable to the forest fires and we can manage the fuel that we can uh, collect the uh, forest floor uh, litter and it, we can safely dispose of that forest. By reducing uh, fuel through mechanical and physical means that was I discussing, uh, we can uh, reduce uh, the fuel concentration using an uh, or excluding prescribed fire basic scientific knowledge base uh, basing prescribed burning operation on clear defined objective and minimize and uh, prescriptions provide and uh, safe working environment minimize the risk of uh, fire escape these are various fire uh, fuel basically the fuel management strategies and the last one is the environmental protection forest fire can be uh, immense loss to the environment as we see that it degrades the environment it creates a soil erosion flooding and it uh, impacts the health system so the fire management activity should be based upon the good scientific study we should not go in haphazard manner and uh, these activities should be planned and conducted in an environmentally sensitive manner considering forest regime and forest management activity appropriate to maintain the vigor and diversity in the population of species communities of an area indigenous flora and fauna appropriate measures uh, to be taken to safeguard water quality quantity and also ensure minimize impact on fire management activities on streams springs soaks swamps ground bodies and basically we should uh, the that the water bodies catchment area we should uh, reduce the degradation of those water bodies because of the forest fire and landscape values geomorphological uh, features cultural historical sites considered when planning the operation we should keep all these things in consideration while we are planning the environmental protection Soil being protected uh, by measures which prevent inappropriate destruction of 
its physical and chemical properties or which promote the stabilization of beer or disturbed earth uh, flow disturbances a last one is indigenous flora and fauna being protected following wildfire suppression by measures which promote reestablishment of ecological processes existing prior to wildfires so this was all how can we manage the forest fires and last one is the capacity building uh, and uh, strengthening the early warning basically uh, we should uh, have a good uh, capacity building in the country we should have a good trained official that uh, basically are in the department of the forest uh, that can uh, that have very various kinds of equipments and infrastructure for firefighting and uh, early warning system should be based on uh, to develop a global warning system for vegetation fire basically uh, kind of uh, various uh, tools like gis gps we can employ that kind of thing in here and to develop an information network to quickly disseminate early warning of uh, fire danger globally to local communities so the kind of warning systems uh, warning centers should be established to develop a historical record of global fire basically the risk should be calculated in here based on the probability and the possibility of the wildfires at a particular community and then we should go for validation and strategic planning for that risk and then design and implement technology transfer program to provide the uh, training to global regional national community for early warning system operation methods for local to global calibration of the system use of system to prevent preparedness detection and various appropriate fire basically these all the management plans uh, come under the preparedness mitigation and prevention so uh, all the forest fire uh, that happens first of the all first of all we should uh, be focusing on these kind of things uh, that the forest fire should not happen we should do the fuel management early uh, warning systems and then when forest fire happens then what are the various strategies they have that i have discussed uh, earlier fire protection plans how can we uh, equip ourselves uh, uh, the minimum impacts from the minimum impacts of the forest fire so this was all about the forest fires